Good evening. Good to have you gather in the Lord's house. Um, on this particular weekend, we're going to hear the Word of God tell us that Jesus, God's Word is powerful. It does help His pastors and leaders to focus, but also helps you and me to focus on the message that comes from heaven, that we have salvation in Jesus. And that's something that all of us can share. We'll follow the order of worship tonight, that is service of word and sacrament. So we're serving Holy Communion as a part of our worship service. Those who are members of our Wells uh, sister congregations are invited to come forward for Holy Communion, ELS Synod also. Um, if you're not a member, we'd ask that you wait and uh, speak with the pastor before communing. We're going to start with the singing of the first hymn. It's printed out in the service folder and on the screens, and the number up there is correct. It is 282, in case you're using the hymnal. We'll begin by singing that hymn, Lord, open now my heart to hear. Hymn 282. Lord, open now my heart. God the Son and God the Spirit, three in one, shall glory, praise, and honor be now and throughout eternity. Please rise. We'll continue on page two. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent, that is, repentant hearts. Or let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. We join together. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. 
You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal word of the Father, you came to live with us. You made your Father known. You washed us from our sins in your own blood. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by pre the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. We turn to the scripture readings for this weekend for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. The first lesson is from Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9 to 311. Ezekiel was taken to Babylon early in Israel's exile, so he had to live away from home. He was to preach God's word to the captives. The bad news was Ezekiel had to preach laments and groaning and woe. So it wasn't a real pleasant message because the people didn't repent of their sins. The good news, though, that was that the Lord still wanted to share his promises of salvation with them, with the people. Then I, Ezekiel, looked and I saw a hand stretched out toward me and in it there was a rolled up scroll. He unrolled it in front of me and there was writing on both sides. Written on it was laments, groaning, and woe. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat what you have received. Eat this scroll, and then go speak to the house of Israel. I opened my mouth, and he fed me the scroll. And then he said to me, Son of man, feed your stomach and fill your belly with this scroll I am, that I am giving you. I ate in my mouth, and it was sweet like honey. Then he said to me, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel, speak my words to them. For you are not being sent to a people who have incomprehensible speech or a difficult language, but you are being sent to the house of Israel. Nor are you being sent to many peoples who have incomprehensible speech and difficult languages whose words you cannot understand. Certainly if I were to send you to such people, they would listen to you. But the house of Israel will not be willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me because the whole house of Israel is hard-headed and hard-hearted. Look, I've made your face just as hard as their faces and your forehead just as hard as their foreheads. I have made your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not fear them and do not be intimidated by their looks, for they are a rebellious house. Then he said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I will speak to you and hear them with your ears. Go now to the exiles, to your own people. You shall speak to them and say to them, This is what the Lord God says, whether they listen or they do not. This is the word of the Lord, the first lesson. We'll continue tonight with the second lesson from the New Testament, now from 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, verses 1 to 4. Here the spiritual leaders or elders among God's people are preparing God's people for Christ's second coming. Therefore, they should not carry out the gospel ministry thinking of themselves, in other words, selfishly, but eagerly care for the flock and be examples to them. Therefore, as a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and one who also shares in the glory that is about to be revealed, I appeal to the elders among you, shepherd God's flock, 
that is among you, serving as overseers, not grudgingly, but willingly, as God desires. Not because you are greedy for money, but because you are eager to do it. Do not lord it over those entrusted to your care, but be examples for the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive an unfading crown of glory. This is the word of the Lord uh, inspired, uh, given to St. Peter. We continue now um, the verse of the day. Alleluia. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah. Invite you to rise for the gospel of reading for this weekend. The gospel is always kind of the main focal point. And tonight we hear from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 12, and then 16 to 20. Unusual event in the life of Jesus. He sends out 72 disciples to proclaim his coming. They are not to be surprised if they are invited are uh, accepted into people's homes, or if a community rejects them. These things are going to happen. The great joy for carrying out his ministry is that people's names are written in heaven. In other words, salvation comes to them. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field. Go your way. Look, I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Do not carry a money bag or traveler's bag or sandals. Do not greet anyone along the way. Whenever you enter a house, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a peaceful person is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking what they give you, because the worker is worthy of his pay. Do not keep moving from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are in the town and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust from your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom on that day than for that town. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. So they'd return from their journey. He told them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will ever harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names have been written in heaven. This is the word of our Lord. Praise be to you. Please be seated. Uh, we'll join in the singing of the hymn of the day, 576, Spread, O oh, Spread the Mighty Word. We're just going to sing the first four stanzas. Spread the mighty word, spread the kingdom of the Lord. Everywhere his 
his breath is given life to beings meant for heaven tell them how the father's will made the world and keeps it still how this only son he gave all from sin and death to save tell our re redeemer's love who forever does remove by his holy sacrifice all the guilt that on us lies tell them of the spirit given now to guide us and to Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Um, that we're going to meditate on is the uh, Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel. We don't often get into that book, and this is a interesting vision that I'm going to talk about tonight as we talk about God's Word. So you've heard that read. Let us start with a prayer. Dear Jesus, um, Help us to understand these words from the Old Testament and understanding them, fill our hearts with power and joy uh, to do what Ezekiel did, to share your name uh, because the world really needs it. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us this opportunity to hear your word. Amen. Dear disciples of the word, I believe you are and I want you to be disciples of God's word. Children are funny. Kids get mail, lots of mail now that they're older. And I throw it on a stack. We have a spot right in the way of the house. And I see their name and it goes on the stack. One day I was looking at the mail and oh, oh, important piece. Jury summons for my youngest son. So I set that aside because there's no way I'm just throwing that on the pile. He's going to miss it when he gets home from work, I said, uh, yeah, you've got to answer this. And he's like, okay, show me what to do. And I did. Um, isn't that interesting how so many messages in this life, um, the junk mail, it kind of goes in one ear and out. All of a sudden, you get that important, the bill, the check, the jury summons, and now, whoa, wait a minute, we've got to treat that a little bit. It's more serious. It's an important message from someone. The message tonight that we're hearing is from God. How much more important than that? And um, in Hebrews chapter 1, we're told a little bit about how God operated in the Old Testament. It says, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers by the prophets at many times and his various ways. He did it in dreams. He talked to them in visions. And that's exactly what, what happens here. There's a whole series of visions in the book of Ezekiel. We're just going to touch on the first one tonight. And Ezekiel sees the Lord. He's, it's the beginning of ministry. And the Lord has a message to give him to share with those around him. He wants him to take this message and learn it and, and then be ready to work with it. Um, you and I have messages from God tonight from Ezekiel. What's really neat is that in the Bible, God doesn't just talk because he likes to talk. Throughout the Bible, he explains his messages, and that's especially true of Ezekiel here because it needs some explaining. And he kind of explains a couple other Bible passages in tonight. I'll have them on the screen that are going to help us. What does God want from you and me? And I say it's exactly the same thing that he wanted from Ezekiel. And I've got it in the theme up on the screen. We are to receive and share the message, other messages that we get on, on different weekends, handed down from heaven. That's what makes 
why we want to listen. Now, I, I got to tell you, who's Ezekiel? I, I, you probably don't remember, even if you learned it at some point in time. Uh, Ezekiel is kind of an obscure guy, but he was very important. I got something up on the screen for you, and I hope you can see it. Um, in 597 BC, and that would be number two, there's four blue squares. The second from the left is, uh, has the number 597, that's before Christ. That's almost 600 years before Jesus was born. Um, I hope this never happens to us. Ezekiel gets taken away, I don't know if he's in chains or not, but he gets led away by his old Babylon, and he's going to spend what I probably is most of the rest of his life there. It's okay, God says to him, I, I've got a plan for you. I need to use you. I need, you're my man on the inside in Babylon. You are going to help my people. He has this beautiful vision. The prophets already said, look, Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And people are going, where's God? What's God doing about all this disaster? And Ezekiel has this vision. God is sitting on the throne. There's fire. He's glorious. And this God says, I'm using you. I got a message for you. And he gives him the message for him to work with. God doesn't leave us empty handed. Now, we're told in um, chapter 2, verse 9, exactly what was in the vision, or the beginning of it anyway. Then I looked and I saw a hand stretched out toward me. And in it, there was a rolled up scroll. Um, they didn't have books like we have today. They didn't bind stuff like that. They had long strips of leather or paper that had been pressed, and they rolled it up on a roller, and it was called a scroll. That was their, basically their version of a book. And so the Lord has a scroll. Now, what's on that scroll? What is this stuff that Ezekiel is going to share? It comes straight from heaven. And well, first of all, we're told it's not short. We're told that there was writing on both sides of the scroll. I don't know if that's common, but I, my, my feeling is no, it isn't. God had so much to say that he said, okay, I'm done on the front side of the scroll. Let's turn it over and we're going to fill the back side. And he does. And does that surprise you, though? Look at your Bible. Pretty big book, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in the Bible. Well, God has a lot to say to you and me, and, and I want to tell you this, there's not a wasted word in it. Everything has meaning. And what I want to tell you then is that this is a really strong message. And the first part you may not like, I kind of cringe too. It's written on it, we're told, was laments, groaning, and woe. Yikes. That's not a good message. Why was God writing laments, groaning, and woe? Well, you see, the Israelites, who are they? There's God's children, aren't they? They're supposed to be God's holy people. And when they messed up, he had rituals at the temple. They offer a sacrifice, and God said, okay, you're clean, you can go home. They didn't care. They were like, I don't have time for you, God. I got other things going on in my life. If the Israelites had had cell phones, they would have been walking around the temple playing on their cell phone. God wasn't happy. He was extremely angry with what they were doing because they were worshiping idols. And he says, okay, guys, if you can't learn the easy way, we're going to do this the hard way. Laments, groaning, and woe. I'd like to, just because it sounds sometimes pastor says, you know, hey, you're doing bad were they doing? I, I cut a clip from uh, chapter 8, verse 16. I'd like to have you hear this. Finally, uh, I don't know if it was an angel or the Lord, somebody brought me, uh, Ezekiel, into the inner cart courtyard of the house of the Lord. And there at the entrance to the Lord, between the vestibule and the altar, were 25 men. These guys had all gathered. And they're in the temple of the Lord. What are they doing? They're showing their backsides <laughs> to the temple of the Lord with their faces towards the east and they were bowing down to the sun in the east. They're worshiping the sun. That's bad enough. Where are they doing it? In God's house. In the house of the living God who created heaven and earth, made the heavenly body. 
and they were worshiping this created ball of fire and dirt as if it was their almighty God. No wonder God was not real happy. Laments, groaning, and woe. Now, if I left you guys with that, you'd go, oh, this is not. And there were times, there are chapters or sections of chapters in Ezekiel. Put it in our face. Hey, you know, this isn't right. Um, but there was, it was a strong message because there is a message of salvation. I'm going to move you forward, and I have it on your screen for you from uh, Ezekiel 34, verse 25. I will make a covenant of peace with them. Um, this is peace. What? Uh, not peace like, oh, I'm bringing you home. You're going to be okay. He would do that eventually. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the peace that he promised in Jesus, our Savior. Through the cross of Jesus, there have a, a, a passage from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and I'm going to read that. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace. That means a lot for you and me, and I want to give you an example. Uh, again, this might hurt a little bit, it might sting, but it's true for all of us, I think, in some way, some time. Um, the Israelites worshipped gods. They worshipped the sun. I don't, we don't kind of do that, do we? But do we worship our time? When you're not at work, you're not at school, you're not at the doctor, you have your hobbies. We all do, and they're fun. Um, what, what kind of hobbies do you like? I, I've got some things here that I wrote down. I, I spend a lot of time watching movies, TV shows. That's one possibility. What about watching sports or reading about sports in the news? That's kind of fun, too. Um, do we spend hours and hours talking to relatives and friends about who's having a baby and what's going on and what guy's in trouble or something like that? Sometimes we like to talk about people. Do we spend most of our free time reading or watching how to decorate our homes, how to feather our nest? Uh, again, themselves, none of that is a problem. And, and human beings have to have hobbies. But here's the deal. Compared to the hours and hours of your free time that you spend doing all, some of that stuff, how much time do you spend reading the Bible? Even for me, I was trying to do a devotion this afternoon and I was amazed at how distracted I got getting ready for church. I had a hard time getting to my devotion. I usually like to do one in the afternoon. It happens. And what I'm really afraid of is that at some point, God's word isn't there for all for us. Here's the beautiful thing. Far away, Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, Jesus brought you near to him. I shed his blood to bring the forgiveness of sins because we do mess up in our lives. We make mistakes, we sin, and we have forgiveness with the Lord. And that is probably the main reason we should pick up our Bible, pick up a devotional book, spend a little time thinking about the Lord and about how God is, is good to us because he really is. This was a strong message, not just in telling people, hey, you messed up, but Ezekiel was telling them, you have a God who loves you. You have a God who's ready to help you day after day to forgive you and, and bless you. Jesus is our peace. Now, something bizarre happens next. Uh, the Lord tells Ezekiel, you Ezekiel, scroll and eat it. First of all, this is a vision. He didn't eat the paper. He didn't eat the, the leather. Um, this is something that he saw. And so what is eating the word? You and I do it. When we take it in our ears, when we Turn it over in our mind. You are consuming God's word. And listen to what happened to Ezekiel. He ate the word and he was filled. And the Lord said, keep eating. And he kept eating and he was satisfied. See, one of the things that happens is you start eating God's word. And it, it kind of... And i got to have more of it. That's what happened with Ezekiel. And, and because, because there's joy... 
in a world of bad news, in a world where we're constantly hearing of sad things going on, God has ways of showing beautiful things, wonderful things, amazing things that fill our hearts with joy. And we need that. And so he says, um, keep, keep on going, Ezekiel. And he says to you and me, keep reading. You know, think about it. What was, you know, when you go to scripture, you, you know, you got questions. What was the main question the Israelites had? Hey, Lord, when are we going home? <laughs> the sad thing was the 70 years had just started. They weren't going home soon. But God had answers for them. Do you think, hey, Lord, when are my problems going to end? Lord, when are things going to get better? Or even some, Lord, when can I go to heaven? When can I? And the Lord has some answer. He doesn't tell us everything we want. But you know the biggest question of all for you and me? Lord, are we still good? Are we still connected? Because you only die once. You don't have to think about that every day. But sin, we either sin daily or at least we think about our sins on a daily basis. And God says, you're good with me. That's what Jesus is all about. There's tremendous comfort in God's word. It's something you almost overdo by reading it, hearing it, and thinking about it. When Jesus left his disciples last time, right before he went, I want you to go not just to Jerusalem, but to Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. And they were excited about doing that. Now he tells in the Old Testament, before the disciples ever were born, he tells Ezekiel, I want you to take my word and go to the people. And I think Ezekiel was excited. And I want you to be excited about taking God's word to people. Not just the New Testament, Jesus part, but even there is wonderful information in the Old Testament, even the words of Ezekiel here. Um, the Lord says explicitly to uh, Ezekiel, son of man, Go now to the house of Israel and speak my word to them. And then the Lord tells them, and yeah, it's, be fun, it's not going to be fun. There's kind of an up part and a down part. The up part, hey, you're not going to strange people who speak a strange language. You're not going to people you don't get. You're going to the house of Israel. You know, you know how they think. That part's easy. The hard part, well, Ezekiel, they aren't listening to me. So most of them aren't going to listen to you, but I'm sending you anyway. I want you to go. They're going to be hard-headed, hard-hearted. I hope that gives you a little bit of comfort. They don't want to listen. Uh, but the Lord says to Ezekiel, I'm going to make you hard-headed. I, I think what the Lord is saying, I'm going to make you stubborn in a different way. You're trying to do something good. You're trying to help these people and even through me save them. I, I'm going to make you real focused on this. And Ezekiel was. So the Lord promised that to him. You know, I would describe it this way. Some churches and pastors, you get a community that's just kind of ready for the gospel. They're open. They have questions. They come to church. And, and it's not the churches, the pastor and the congregation, people don't want, don't want to ask questions, they don't want to go to church. Um, you know, I think a lot of times it goes back, I would say that's true at Shepherd's so have people who just are really excited about hearing the word, and then sometimes people don't want to hear, don't want to ask questions, they don't want to come to church to ask questions. Just do what Ezekiel did, you keep on sending, sharing the word wherever you can. And the Lord has a beautiful thought here. Um, he says, I, I'm, I'm sending you because I love these people. And we need to remember that if God is sending somebody and you're kind of sharing your faith and they're not listening, just think of this. God loves this person. And this conversation probably isn't going to end well, but God's still going to pray. And remember Jesus said, the harvest is full of people who want to hear and he sent his disciples out, and he's sending you and me because there are people who will listen. There are people who will uh, come to church eventually. And so um, he sends Ezekiel, he sends us. Did you know that in 1974, interest, our um, went up 
from the previous year. That was a bad year. There were also lines for gas, although I'm not, not, not sure how much the for $100,000 and four, you would have been 1000 more on that same house. Ouch. Um, the reason I'm telling you that is because in 1974, our church body was given an opportunity. Uh, we had an open door in Colombia, South America, and um, there was some money that was given as a special gift to get started. But with the inflation running wild and things not being right, the church could have said, the wells could have said, you know, maybe we shouldn't go right now because what happens if this works and we can't sustain it? We can't sustain the missionaries there. Uh, they didn't do that. They went, they sent us. Uh, January of 1974. They started the church and it grew. And how, why do that? Why take the chance? Yes. They believe that God, who had given the opportunity and opened the door, was somehow going to keep it if it was successful. And he did. Now the question is, where does faith come from? And the answer is the word. The Lord says to Ezekiel, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words. I will speak to you and hear them with your ears. You know, this is true in your life, and it's true in my life, and it's true in the life of the church. Without faith, you can't go forward. You've got to trust the Lord for your personal problems, personal challenges, difficulties, for, for the projects we do at church, for the outreach that we do together. You've got to trust the Lord and pray a lot. But the Lord, the Word will give you faith, strengthen your faith. The Word will move you to do the things He wants you to do. And so the power is there. Continue in that beautiful message that has been sent from heaven. Because through that message, God will help you not only to survive day to day, but to thrive in being his messenger. There's a pastor story that I'm going to end with today. It's used by lots of preachers over the years. And it has to do with what this whole thing is about God from heaven. There's a man who was dying. And he called his son, his only son, to his side. And he was sitting there at the end of the bed. And the father said, you know, I'm going. And the son said, yeah, I know, Dad. And he goes, I want to leave with you because I love the greatest treasure. And the son's thinking, okay, what, what, what are you talking about here? And the father looks over at the nightstand and there's this really worn, used Bible. Now, I'm sure he probably left the son a few other things. But first and foremost, I'm leaving you this Bible. Why? Son probably had his own Bible. He was doing something. He was saying that message from heaven that God has given me, I want you, when you look at that Bible, to remember me. This is my life. This is what I was about. God in his word. And as I'm sharing this Bible with you, I want you to share God's word with others. That's what he was telling him. And that's what the Lord is saying to Ezekiel. It's not always easy, but you can do it. With faith in me, listening, digesting the word, um, you will help people. You will help to save them by carrying out your ministry. Ezekiel, you and I carry out our personal witnessing, our personal service in the same way. May God bless us all to take that message from heaven, to hold on to it, and to use it. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus, our dear Savior. Amen. We'll join in the Nicene Creed as you have it uh, printed for you. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, who him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have the offering plates at the entryway of the sanctuary. You can leave your gift there. Those at home can mail them in. Let's continue with prayer. And we also, after the prayer of the church, have a prayer for our nation as we're celebrating uh, on the 4th of July, the birthday, uh, our Independence Day. So. Dear Lord God, because of your deep desire and love uh, for human beings, although we don't deserve that love, you have poured your word out through the church into the world. Thank you for the many Bibles that we have today. Uh, even on our phones and computers, we can look at your word. And in that word, you bring a message of uh, sin and grace. You show us that uh, we need you, and we see the forgiveness and life that you give in Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus, for your death and resurrection. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, for your helping us to understand the word, your guidance. Um, dear Heavenly Father, bless the church as we go forward. Give us the tools and the opportunities to share the gospel of Jesus with the people of the world. Bless your church, dear Lord. We ask that you would be with those in our church who are sick or suffering. We're very thankful that Lois Velasic is out of the hospital. We pray that she continues to improve and glad that she can be with us tomorrow in church. We pray this all in the name of Jesus and now the prayer of the na of the nation for the nation almighty father strong to save we come before you on behalf of our nation we boast much about our freedoms but we often use them to try to be free from you pull out these weeds by their roots so that they wither and die Send your angels to point out the hidden dangers and steer us clear of every demonic ambush. Be our rear guard as we walk the dangerous road to our homeland. Keep an eye on the land that we love, our country, Forgive its many sins. Pull it back when it gets too near the cliff of disaster. Send your Holy Spirit with power that America may remember your name and honor it. It is true that freedom is not free. It must be bought with blood. Thank you for those that shed their blood in defense of our homeland. But most of all, we thank you for your son who spilled his holy blood that might be free from the grip of sin and death and the devil. Grant this to us and our nation for his name's sake, amen. We pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the 
the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God, and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks, for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole, whole earth is full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. I'm going to ask those on this side be seated, um, and you, those who aren't coming up can sit down here. I'll have this side. Invite you to rise, and we'll join in the song of thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing. His praise, tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads us people forth in joy. With shouts of thanks, giving alleluia. Hallelujah. Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his Amen. 
I would invite you to remain standing. We have a tradition at our church that for the 4th of July, we do the Pledge of Allegiance uh, to our country and also to our Christian flag. If you're like me, you're not as familiar with the Christian flag one, I'm gonna use my notes to that one. Uh, but we'll do the one to our country first of all. So we'll join, to, oops, we'll join together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Holy Trinity, for whom it stands, Father, Spirit, and Son, eternal Godhead, three in one, with grace and mercy for all. You may be seated and we'll join in the singing of the hymn, a patriotic hymn, God Bless Our Native Land. God bless our native land, for may she ever stand through storm and night. When the wild tempests break, ruler of wind and wave, do thou our country save thy great might. For her heart as shall rise to God above the skies, on him we wait. Thou who art ever night, guarding with watchful eye to thee aloud, we cry, God save. Good evening to everybody. Um, it's nice to have visitors. We've got a lot of our people are traveling on this holiday weekend. So it's, it's good to see everybody who is here. Uh, we pray that you have a very safe and, and joy-filled uh, Fourth of July celebration on Monday, of course, but also this weekend. Um, the schedule of things this weekend, uh, or this week is regular. I'll be having classes. We weren't able to have the Ephesians Bible class last Tuesday. We will have it. Uh, it's in person and it's on Zoom as well, so we have it both ways with that. Uh, Tuesday at 6 o'clock, all my other classes and things will meet. Um, if you want to hang around, I am, uh, for uh, fireworks at 840, you can. There will be a lot of people gathering outside. Church will be open, the bathrooms, and I do have uh, some water in the kitchen as well. So we weren't able to have a picnic this year because we had church. Um, if we get fireworks on a night that's not Saturday next year, we might actually be able to have a picnic again as we normally do. So um, those are my announcements. Have a great uh, week in the Lord.